God, thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to worship Jesus. Amen. Let's sing out the, that song. Have faith. Have faith.
like to lift up before God. Uh, as always, we want to pray for the leader of our fellowship, Pastor Greg Mitchell, his wife Lisa, for God's blessing, the assistant pastors, Jesse and Bethany Morales, and Steve and Emily Cassio. We also want to believe God for the Spanish ministry, Diego Galvan, his wife Kelly. All of our area leaders for the mind of God, we're praying for our president, his cabinet, our military for God's protection. Uh, our mother pa our mo uh, mother church, uh, Pastor Rich Cox, his wife Brenda, the Redlands congregation. Also the assistant pastors, Bob and Torres, his wife Denise, and Brian and Janie St. Armand. The evangelist Leonard Williams, his wife Patsy for continued blessing. Healing for Patsy, all of our fellowship churches throughout the earth. Uh, Andrew and Sabrina Sines in Riverside, Scott and Keisha Reed in Paris, George and Lisa Albron in Ontario, David and Lorraine Munoz in Highland, Juan and Debbie Landin in Montclair, David and Chrissy Gatliff in Tyler, Texas. We're also praying for Renee and Molly uh, in Calexico. Their church was shut down today because smoke uh, uh, pretty bad inside the building, so tomorrow he's supposed to get a hold of the insurance and see... Uh, uh, how they're going to take care of that. So believe God for them, pray for them, that God would continue to help them. We also want to pray for our international works, Felipe and Daisy Segovia in Bogota, Colombia. Also Sebastian and Viviana Lopez in Cali, Colombia. Uh, Sebastian just sent some pictures just last week. Um, baptism they did. I think there was four or five people they baptized in Cali, Colombia. So pray for them. God is moving. God is helping them. And they are having breakthroughs. So we also want to pray for Mario and Christy in Lima, Peru. That God would continue to establish a uh, work for God there. I want to pray for our church here in Covina. For uh, blessings upon our congregation. People that have uh, you know, uh, lost their jobs possibly. That God would help them. And we're also believing God for great things in new converts. People that have said prayers and prayed on our outreaches. That God would draw them in. Um, there's several of them I've been sending the church link to and, you know, and, and just encouraging them to come out and serve God. So pray for them and believe God for them as well. We also want to pray for um, some needs tonight, the Chacon family for salvation, our sister Dora for healing, Mary Irvin for healing, uh, the Echeverria family for God's touch, uh, Rob Harris, Kainoa, and Sally Harris all for healing. Uh, Jackson, Pastor Zuzueta, Maria Henderson, Gwendolyn, and Pete Lopez, all for continued healing upon their lives. Uh, Gathia for salvation, uh, Jose for sa salvation and direction, uh, Jerry for healing, um, Ruby's family um, for God's touch, and uh, the Rios family for continued uh, comfort upon them in the passing of Eddie. Uh, believe God for them. Pastor Lee, one of the local pastors here uh, for healing as well. Maria Haregi uh, for healing. And also Evan Davis uh, has a broken hip, so he needs a miracle. So pray for him for recovery from that. And also Abel uh, needs healing from COVID. So uh, lots of needs, church. Let's pray. Let's believe God. Uh, let's go before the Lord this, this evening and ask God to help us. Uh, and when we subside, uh, Ryan, you'll come and open us in prayer tonight. Let's pray and believe God. Father God, we love you tonight. We thank you for this time to be in your church, Lord God. We come with an expectancy, Lord God. We know you are our healer, our provider, our, our strength and refuge, Lord God. We're asking that you would meet with us this evening, that you would speak a word from heaven. Challenge each and every one of us, Lord God, uh, God, to walk with you and to be focused upon your will, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for bringing us here tonight. Father God, I pray that you continue to move in our services, Father God, that you continue to help us during this time. Father God, I pray for these prayer requests. You bring healing and salvation upon these people, Father God, and I pray for the leaders of our fellowship. Continue to give them strength and wisdom, Father God, and I pray that you bless us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Greet one another this evening. Praise God.
I think, well, I knew they were trendy, but I didn't think they were going to be, like, as popular. Because mm -hmm. I, beautiful. yeah, they're so trendy right now. Um, so I <laughs> offered them, like, to, in, like, a treat box that I made. And the people just wanted, like, the bongs by themselves. So I was like, okay, I'll take them. Yeah, how are you? But I was, like, flooded with orders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this past week, I've just been, like, doing Pokemon. I've been staying up late, just, like, into that wee hours of the night. <laughs> I'm done with them now. I'm like, are you doing that cool. You're good for you, though. Uh, yeah, I am. So they have a new they have a new cereal out. It's called Cuckoo for Cocoa Bombs. <laughs> yeah, I'm making it. I'm making it um, tomorrow. Praise God. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we are going to have a Christmas message tonight because uh, obviously Wednesday night we'll be showing our. Uh, how the Grinch found Chris, Christ in Christmas. Um, so that's what we're going to be showing on Wednesday night. So uh, you will be having a message this evening. So bear with me just to give you a few announcements, let you know about all that God is doing in our services. We do have our church services every Sunday morning. Uh, uh, just take notice, so next Sunday, I'll be starting Bible study back again at 10 a.m. So next Sunday, um, Sunday morning at 10, uh, Bible study back on track for that. So be out if you can. Uh, I'm here at 9 for prayer. We have our Bible study at 10 and then services at 11. Sunday evenings at 7 and we also have our midweek service every Wednesday night at 7.30. So join us in that and believe God for great, great things in our lives. Praise God. You know, uh, with this COVID going on, it just seems like it's been crazy, out of control. A couple vaccines have been released. Uh, uh, so we're believing God uh, that things are going to start changing and start starting get, getting back to some kind of normalcy in life. Uh, I'm believing God for that. Uh, um, I know my work should be getting the, the vaccines, and we're going to start giving that to our employees. Uh, you know, obviously, we work health care. Um, so, you know, around the first of the year, we should be getting our doses and uh, it's going to be, I'm sure it's going to go out to all of us. We'll have an opportunity to do that. Uh, people are asking me, are you going to get it? Are you going to get it? And I, you know, I really believe I'm, I probably will. <laughs> I'm around it all the time uh, just for my own satisfaction, my own protection. But, um, you know, uh, who knows what, what, what's going to happen. It's a vaccine. It's gone through the process just like all of our vaccines have through. Uh, in life, you know, uh, so we've we've been good so far with you know a lot of the other things that were out there. Polio, right? They have that vaccine now. We have the measles, mumps, rubella vaccines that we have as kids going into school that has kind of eliminated those things. Uh, so I'm trusting. Uh, you know, I, I understand we have to have some kind of faith that God has given our doctors and nurses wisdom, and you know, in in in, in creating some of these things. So. Uh, let's see where that happens. Uh, yeah, it's all on you. I can't tell you what to do with uh, uh, your life, but um, I'm 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 being I'm excited. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in this new year. So I, I want this madness behind us. I want to get back on track so we can outreach, uh, have events, uh, uh, revivals, and all the different things. So pray for that. Believe God for that. Uh, and see what God will do and through it all that. Uh, amen. Again, I've just said take flyers with you and, and pass those out when you're out and about uh, um, grocery shopping or when you're sitting at Walmart waiting for them to put the groceries in your back trunk. Uh, uh, when they come up to your window and ask your name, make sure that's you. Hand them a flyer and say, yes, it's me. I want to invite you to church. Uh, put my groceries in the trunk. No, thanks. <laughs> but believe God for great things. Uh, um, so witness and testify and tell people about Jesus. And I think that's basically, we do have Bible conference coming up January 11th. So if you want to venture off into that, uh, you know, you can see me, the conference starts January 11th through the 15th and it, you know, it's open for everybody to go. Um, you know, but there is sponsor opportunities for uh, married couples or single men that you know they've they've allowed it for that at the conference so uh, believe God for that and see what God will do we are going to take an offering tonight give you a chance to invest in all that God is doing let's continue to be faithful with our tithes and offerings pledges that we make to world evangelism 
Put that into the hands of God. Uh, God owns all things. He's able to do all things in our lives, but he's looking for faithfulness in people that he can trust to bring resources through your life. Uh, if you're willing to be a vessel for God, if you're faithful in your giving and you do do that regularly, can I tell you, God sees that. God takes notice of that. Those that honor God, God honors. You know, we, God doesn't force his blessing on us. Okay, you know, you, people get that mentality, oh, God makes us serve. No, God doesn't make you serve him. God doesn't make you give your finances. But God does notice when people do that out of a, out of a willing heart. God gives us a free will. We pick, we choose what we want to do in life. People, you know, think that, you know, oh, that's just the life I was grow I grew up in. That's the life that God had for me. No, we can choose our lives. When we come to an age of accountability, we come to an age of understanding, we can begin to make decisions how God wants us to live according to God's word. Will you be that person? God's word says tithe, give offerings besides. And, and if we do that, God has a way of showing himself real for you. Let's believe God tonight. Let's be faithful with our tithes and offerings. I need God to help me in that area. Uh, I do my part and I, you know, I put my money uh, where God has called us to and I trust him that he will take care of me. And can I tell you, he's never let me down ever. God has taken care of me for over 25 years now and counting. And, you know, I, you know, I've God has shown himself. He's proved himself to me. And uh, I take notice of that and I honor God with my tithes uh, and my offerings and pledges. So let's be faithful to God. God is always faithful to us. Again, our box is over there on the table to my right, to your left. Um, as we sing, you be, feel free to drop your tithe over there and believe God for great things in your life. Amen. We're going to sing out that song, I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. some of that here. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. If you brought your Bibles tonight, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2 tonight. and I want to preach a sermon about being satisfied with Christmas. Being satisfied with Christmas. You know, I'm so grateful for what I have in my life right now. And, you know, what I do have, you know, I grew up, you know, from a, a divorced family. I grew up from a mom and dad that separated when I was probably around eight years old, nine years old, they separated. And, uh, you know, and they stayed separated until we were in our teens and, you know, finally got a divorce later on when we were in our late teens. Uh, my sister was probably in her early 20s. You know, she's a couple of years older than me. So we always spent Christmas apart, you know, you know, sometimes with my mom, sometimes with my dad or some one day here and one day there. And and, you know, mom was on welfare. So we didn't really have a lot for Christmas. So I don't have these high expectations for Christmas uh, that if I don't get a certain gift, if I don't get something that I wanted, uh, um, you know, that I'm, it's going to just blow my my Christmas. I don't have that. I, you know, I thank God that I wasn't raised like that, um, but I have had some struggles in life. I have had some, uh, you know, sometimes as parents, you know, you want the best for your kids. And, you know, my kids didn't always have, you know, everything that they wanted for Christmas. But what we did have, we had salvation. 
And too many people are so set on Christmas with these high expectations of, of this list of things that they want for Christmas. And if it doesn't happen, uh, they're depressed. So when you think about Christmas, how does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? Because, you know, from the time Thanksgiving comes, you know, the radio station begins to start playing all the Christmas songs. I kind of get burned out by them because, they're, you know, they're already playing them at, you know, we haven't even finished Thanksgiving and Christmas songs are already out. But if you think about those Christmas songs that are played, they want, it, they want you to pump it up to make you feel like it's just a wonderful time of year. You know, the songs of the most wonderful time of the year, it's the most wonderful time. Have a holly jolly Christmas. All of these songs, uh, Jingle Bells, Walking in a Winter Wonderland, and all these songs are made to, to show you uh, some excitement, some joyous time, some trouble-free, right? It can put on this, uh, uh, you know, uh, facade that, you know, it's going to be the greatest time. But let me ask you honestly, is that what you're experiencing right now? Is, it, is that what's happening in your life right now? Are you experiencing that holly jolly Christmas? And, you know, there might be some that are, but can I tell you, that's not across the board. Others may not be feeling like that. For some of you, personal problems may keep you from experiencing the joy of the season. For others, you feel like one crisis after another has possibly, you know, you've been exposed to. With many of our current problems, it's hard for us to have a holly jolly Christmas. Others may be so busy at working hard and there's no time for sitting around, uh, right? You know, roasting chestnuts on an open fire, right? And all of the things that people portray that Christmas is all about. Or maybe there's not anything really wrong, but for some reason, you're just not enjoying Christmas. It's not providing you the emotional, joyful lift uh, that you are expecting. In fact, uh, Christmas, for some, can almost be depressing. The world does not look like a winter wonderland, right? It looks like just another ordinary uh, dull winter. We can become disillusioned at Christmas. And that disillusionment is not as unusual or uncommon as you might think. Others, we might get so hyped up with expectations about what Christmas is supposed to be, uh, that often the real thing doesn't measure up and we're disappointed. So what can you do this Christmas to, to avoid all of these setbacks? How can you improve your level of joy this Christmas? See, the answer is that is found in our Bible. The answer to Christmas is right here in God's word. Many of you might have heard of Magi or the Magi, you know, they use that word, which really means the wise men from the east. And in our story, in our scripture that we're going to be reading in Matthew chapter two, we have wise men from the east. They saw a star in the sky, right? And that star in the sky, they were supposed to follow to find the newborn king. And from the attitudes of these wise men and the events that surrounded their journey, uh, we see how we can raise our level of joy at Christmas. The real meaning of Christmas is Christ. That's, you know, at the beginning of that. And we're, we're living in a world where people want to remove Christ from Christmas. At my work, we have to say we're having our holiday party, right? We can't say Christmas uh, because it doesn't meet everybody's religious beliefs. So they call it the holiday party. And that's what many people want to do. They want to take Chris Christ out of Christmas and they want to just make it uh, uh, the holidays. But as Christians, we know the truth uh, that's supposed to come with Christmas. And that's found in Matthew chapter 2. So let's read along. I'm going to be reading verse 1 through 15. The Bible says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen the, his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerus Jerusalem with him. 
And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed and behold, word, uh, behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country another way. The flight into Egypt. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother. Flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. So tonight there are three lessons that we're going to learn from this story. Number one, what is it that you seek during Christmas? Is Christmas to you all about uh, the presents? Is it all about uh, uh, sitting together, making tamales? Uh, or, or is it you know, all about uh, what you're going to have to eat uh, that night? Uh, because there's some lessons that we can learn from the story. What is it that you're truly seeking for Christmas? Your level of joy at Christmas is directly related to what it is uh, that you seek. You see, my kids came uh, and celebrated Christmas, uh, and my wife says we're having Chinese food. <laughs> and they're already bummed out. Where's the tamales, Mom? Uh, what about the tamales? You know, she didn't tell them that she was actually making them a few of those, uh, but they were bummed out because we were having Chinese food for Christmas. They like Chinese food too, uh, but can I tell you, Christmas isn't the same for them without mom's tamales. So, you know, and so people are actually, they get bummed out because they don't get what they're seeking at Christmas. So what it is, what is it tonight that you're seeking this Christmas? You need to ask your, yourself this question. Uh, what is it? What is it that I want out of Christmas this year? What is it that would make your Christmas a wonderful, satisfying time? Is it the snow that we never have? Or is it the family get together? Uh, you know, sometimes Christmas can be a nightmare if you have a big family, right? Fights, arguments. You know, I, I remember, you know, we would get together at my grandma's. Uh, and, you know, at midnight, we would wait all day. We, you know, they would be partying all day. And we would open presents at midnight. By that night, my, my theos are all like, they're all hung up, drunk already, heads already hanging over the chair. They're already, most of them passed out on the couch. And, and you know, Christmas, you know, I, I remember growing up like that. I'm like, man, my aunt would be so mad at my Uncle Art, because, or my Uncle uh, Ralph, because he would be so drunk uh, and <laughs> just slobbering. And, and she would be so embarrassed. Uh, and she'd have to put up with that every year at Christmas. Bummed out depressed. Why? Because Christmas wasn't giving them what they thought they should have. What is it that you want this Christmas? Is it wonderful? Is it a satisfying time? You know, and we can go on maybe finding the right present to give, perhaps getting the present that you've been hoping for. And the problem with all of these things is they can leave you let down when you have your, your hopes set up to receive that and you don't get it. You don't get it. Have you ever had that kind of experience when you were disappointed by Christmas because it did not deliver what you thought it should? You didn't get what you were expecting. See, the problem is not Christmas. Uh, the problem is our expectations. We're looking for the wrong thing. 
The wise men show us uh, how to increase our level of joy at Christmas by looking for the right thing. What was it they were looking for? See, verse 2 tells us they came to Jerusalem and said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. See, they thought they were looking for Jesus. Christmas to them was an opportunity to worship Jesus. This is what we need to be looking for at Christmas. We need to be expecting this Christmas is a, our relationship with God, our relationship with Jesus uh, uh, is an experience of worship. It's a fresh glimpse uh, of what Jesus did on the cross, uh, what he was born for, uh, why he came to this earth uh, to be born king of the Jews. Uh, and if our goal this Christmas is to worship Jesus, can I tell you, uh, Christmas will not bum you out. I doubt very seriously uh, we will be dissatisfied with our Christmas if our focus uh, is on Jesus Christ. We could get a lump of coal and still have joy. The second thing we need to look at is where do you where do you look for your you know satisfaction with Christmas? Because many times the level of joy at Christmas is directly related to where you look. But we learn from the wise men, even the wise men, were they missed the mark at first, right? They were going to go to King Herod's palace, right? That's where all kings should be born, right? They should be in a palace somewhere, uh, living the high life, uh, you know. But Jesus was born in a lowly stable. They missed, they missed it by a mile where they were looking. And we learn in the scripture they were in the wrong place, uh, uh, to look for Christmas, they started by looking in the wrong place. They looked where their own human reasoning uh, uh, said that they should look. Uh, the star indicated the birth of a new king in Israel, and the wise men went to where kings should be born. Uh, they went to a place uh, in Herod, uh, uh, Herod the Great in the capital city of Jerusalem. But what a mistake that was. Uh, when Herod heard of the birth of the new king, uh, he now wants to destroy and King Herod actually put out a decree uh, that all kids under the age of two should be killed. Male, male kids, male babies. That's why Herod says, hey, when you find Jesus, come back and tell me where he's at so I can come worship him too. No, nah, he wanted to set out a hit on him is what he wanted to do. So that's, they're looking in the wrong place. We too are tempted to look for joy at Christmas in the wrong places. We think by getting or, uh, you know, getting or giving the right gift, uh, we will be satisfied. We imagine that being with family will be joyful, but all of these things can easily disappoint us. You may not be able to afford the right gift for a loved one. Family members may be missing from your holiday celebration. And if you're looking to these things for joy, you may be left with a feeling of dissatisfaction. You see, the wise men looked at in the right place eventually when they looked to God. The trip to Jerusalem was not a total loss. Uh, while there, they discovered where they should have looked in the first place, uh, and that was to the Word of God, the Bible. So they went to the scribes in Jerusalem. The scribes, they still have them there today. You go, uh, you go into the, some of these sites, uh, and inside, the, inside these rooms where there's glass, they have these scribes, and they're, and they're writing with a real... The old-fashioned pen, you know, and they're writing stuff down. I don't know. The Bible's already written. I don't know, you know, if they're just trying to rewrite history or what, what they're doing. But they're, they're there, and they have the, they call them, they're the scribes, and they're, and they're writing the Word of God. So they went, uh, and they went to the scribes, which knew the Word of God. And, and they went to the scribes in Jerusalem, and they said that according to the prophet Micah, the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. And with this new information, they looked again at the star and began to follow it to Bethlehem until it stood over the house where the Christ, where the, where the child Jesus lived. And they found what they were in search of. The third thing we need to look at is what do you give? What is Christmas about? Is it about giving gifts? Yes, we we do that. We follow, you know, we, you know that's why we give gifts, right? Because the, the wise men... I actually offered gifts to Jesus and, and you know, and that's the, you know, we switched the gifts back and forth. Uh, you know, we kind of take something of it, but I think we took it out of proportion because 
Christmas is way blown out of proportion. Way, way blown out of proportion. I think we forget the real meaning of Christmas. You know, we've made it a point in our house that, you know, every Christmas morning we wake up and we read the story of Jesus so the kids know what Christmas is really about. Again, we did that yesterday. We even invited my mother and father-in-law. Uh, they actually stayed in there during this one, you know, and I was like, we read it in front of them and I kind of threw in some things, you know, if it wasn't for Jesus, I probably wouldn't be here today to be able to speak to you guys right now because my, I was out of my mind uh, on drugs, running the streets, uh, uh, not even taking care of my family at one time. Uh, and if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, what he's done in my life, uh, who knows where my kids would be today? And I had said what a blessing it is to be there with my mother and father-in-law. And, you know, and, and, and I had a, just an opportunity to share Christ with them right in front of them. Uh, that They wouldn't hear that. They wouldn't hear that otherwise. So what is it that you give? See, the level of joy at Christmas is directly related to what you give. If that's all I had that day, that was enough for me. You know what I mean? I didn't need presents. I didn't need gifts. See, because my joy is not found over those things. Because I could lose my job tomorrow, right? Uh, we could crash. Uh, we could lose. You know, money could mean nothing overnight. Uh, we've seen that over the years. Uh, how, you know, the stock market's up. It's down. The, t the price of money, you know, the, uh, the, actually the money is, you know, it goes up. It goes down. A dollar is really not even worth a dollar sometimes. It, uh, it's worth like 80 cents, you know, and it just it fluctuates. It could change overnight. Just like this coronavirus, right? Back in January, uh, uh, changed our, you know, 2020. I call it the year from hell. <laughs> 2020 is the year from hell. I've, I know more people that have died this year than ever in my life. <laughs> because of this virus, because of what we're going through. I've, I know more people that have lost their jobs this year than I've probably known all my, all my other years put together. I call it the year from hell. But can I tell you... Uh, um, I have Jesus Christ no matter what life brings me. Uh, I have Jesus because that's where my focus is. Your level of joy at Christmas should be directly related to what you give. And that should be your worship to Jesus Christ. The wise men came to Jesus' house. Uh, they were bearing gifts. Uh, the gifts they gave were entirely appropriate. Uh, uh, they gave gold, uh, which was basically that's the gift of, for a king. That's why, you know, that's the re representation of, of these gifts that they brought. They brought gold, which was, you know, a gift for a king. And by giving it, they acknowledged that Jesus was and is the king of kings. They gave frankincense, which is a gift for a priest. Jesus Christ is known as our high priest, right? The one who would bring us to God. And they gave myrrh, which is gift for the dead, right? They would bury you. They would wrap you in, cl in clothing, right? And they would put myrrh on your body, uh, which was gift for the dead. And this was a fragrant ointment uh, used to the anoint the body uh, before a burial. And by giving it, they acknowledged that Jesus had come to die for the sins of the entire world. And we ought to give the appropriate gifts this Christmas as well. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about material gifts. I'm talking about more important things uh, that we ought to give the gift of our love uh, and to our loved ones, right? Uh, the gift of kindness to our friends and family. Uh, we ought to give the gift of our help to those that are in need and hurting. Uh, we ought to give the gift of forgiveness uh, to those who have offended us, who have hurt us. Uh, and by giving these gifts, uh, we're, we're following what the Bible says, uh, right? Uh, we're putting that into action. Uh, and can I tell you, when we give those kinds of gifts, uh, it will result, result in a joyous and meaningful Christmas uh, for many, many people. Now, as I close tonight, church, what are you giving for Christmas this year? What are your expectations this year? Why not consider giving yourself, uh, right? Giving your time to your family. Give your compassion to the hurting. Uh, give your forgiveness to the isolated, to somebody uh, who's been offended by you or you've uh, been offended by them. Or possibly even if it takes giving your heart to Jesus Christ. 
I promise you tonight, church, when you look for the right thing, look in the right place and give the right gift, then you will have a joy this Christmas. I hope Christmas to you is more than just shopping, trying to make everyone happy by getting the right gifts. I hope it's a time that we can reflect on the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because Christmas should be a time that we can spend with our families and really, really focus on the spiritual part of Christmas, not just the material part. Do you really want to be satisfied uh, this Christmas and have joy? Then can I tell you tonight, make Jesus the reason for this season. Amen. Let's bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord tonight. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed in reference to God. Perhaps tonight you're not feeling the joy of Christmas. Perhaps maybe your heart is far from Jesus right now. You're not saved. You're not born again. Maybe you do not have a relationship with God. And maybe that's part of the problem right there. Because Jesus is the reason for Christmas. That's why we do it. You know, I talk to people all the time. Uh, do you celebrate Christmas? They say yes. I said, do you believe in Jesus? They say no. And I'm like, well, how, how, how do you do that? <laughs> Well, because it's all about the presents, you know, it's just we, what we do. Well, you know, did you know that, that, that Christmas actually came from God, came from Jesus? But, oh, I don't believe in any God. I don't, I don't, and it's like, I don't know. I don't understand how they can say that, but they do say that. I had a co-worker. I don't want to believe in God. Well, he believes in you. He created you to have a relationship with him. And outside of that, you're never going to have joy. You're never going to have, be content in life. You're always going to be dissatisfied with your whole life until you really find Christ. Perhaps you're here tonight. You're, you're like that. You don't have the joy that you should have from a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're not content in life. God loves you. God cares for you. God has a plan for you. But it includes Him. And away from Him, you will never be satisfied. Bible says Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for us, that we could have our sins forgiven. And tonight I want to offer that to you. That's the perfect gift. That's my gift to you tonight is to ask you, would you like to receive Jesus into your heart? And if you would, I want you to lift your hand. Perhaps you're tuning in tonight on YouTube. You're looking, you're watching our service and maybe you don't have joy. You've been let down from this Christmas. You're not satisfied. Perhaps, uh, you know, personal problems, financial problems, job situations, relationship issues, whatever it happens to be that you're not satisfied and you know that you need God tonight. You need something different. You need a, a change of perspective tonight uh, and you're tuning in tonight to uh, you want to receive Jesus, I, that the gift that I have to offer you tonight, to, would you lift your hand? In our service tonight, you're here tonight. You want Jesus, would you lift your hand and say, you know what, that's me, I need God. I need Jesus, I need my sins forgiven. You're tuning in on YouTube. You want Jesus, would you lift your hand? Would you join us tonight? Accept him into your life as your Lord and as your Savior. Can I tell you, that's part of the problem right there. That's the main problem. If you're not living for God, anybody tonight, quickly lift it up in the service tonight. Anybody at all, quickly. Praise God. If you're out there and you lifted your hand, would you do one thing? Would you take a stand up to your feet? Take a step forward to the, towards the screen. And I want you to kneel down. I'm going to lead you in a prayer tonight. We're going to believe God for you. We're going to believe God. I want you to say these words. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for my sins. I, and on the third day, you rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. Right now, I, I'm willing to serve you the rest of the days of my life. Come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior and cleanse me with your precious blood.
thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you said that prayer tonight, God's going to help you. Let your focus be on Jesus. That's the reason for the season. It's not the presence. It's not the gifts. Yes, those are nice sometimes. Uh, yes, it's good to get together with our family, uh, have a meal together to share uh, and fellowship with one another. But can I tell you, if those leave you let down, because they will sometimes, some years, uh, I, you know, I remember not having my mom and my dad with me at Christmas time being separated, being with one or without the other, or, uh, or vice versa. Can I tell you, those were days that I did not look forward to. Who am I going to spend this Christmas with? You know, and, and then those things let me down. But can I tell you, since I've been saved, uh, I've never been let down. Jesus is always satisfied every Christmas. I may not have everything I want in life. Uh, there may be people missing in my life. But can I tell you, uh, my hope and my expectation is in Jesus Christ. That's what we look forward to. Let's all stand tonight. We're going to worship Jesus as we sing out that song. At the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, demons flee by the blood of Jesus. We are free. Hallelujah. Demons flee by the blood of Jesus. We are free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Focus is on every Christmas is the gifts, the family. You're going to be let down sometimes. It's not going to satisfy. But can I tell you, with Jesus Christ, every situation we can make it a good situation. I, I get it. We lose loved ones. We you know we lose family members. We have good days. We have bad days. But can I tell you, we're all going to die one day. Every single one of us. And the good news is that when we do, we go to be with Jesus. We go to be with Jesus. That far outweighs any, any gift I can get in life. 
those things are just, they're going to break, you know, sometimes kids, they open their presents and they break them on day one. <laughs> you know, it's funny that, you know, the kids were opening presents yesterday and they, you know, the presents were gone. They were in a box that they came in playing in the box. <laughs> We had to like get rid of the box because they were just having too much fun in the box. It was broken and it just disintegrated, but they were playing with the wrapping paper. They were playing with the ribbons. They were playing with the, the empty boxes. So kids, you know, they have the understanding, hey, you know, life's more than these toys, you know, but as we get older and start maturing, you know, we start becoming discontent because it doesn't stand up to what we thought it should be about. Let it be about Jesus, amen. Let God help us. Appreciate you all coming tonight. Uh, don't forget Wednesday night. To invite people. Bring them out. Uh, uh, the Grinch finding Christ in Christmas. Amen. It's going to be a great time. So let's believe God. Let's bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Uh, Mark, ask God's blessing as we dismiss tonight. Sending him, Lord, for uh, just dying on the cross for us, Lord. I thank you for everything you've done. I thank you for bringing us back and having us here. And uh, protect us, Lord, as we go out till you come back again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless.